the text. Voice no voice. More voice than the person. Sons of men and angels say. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Saints in Christ, welcome to the Resurrection Service 2020. It is good to gather again in celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul tells us that our faith is built on the resurrection of Christ 
and without the resurrection, our faith would be in vain. We will be celebrating this uh, service with the Holy Communion towards the end. We will give you a chance to um, prepare or to collect the elements if you have not done so, your bread and juice. And we will give you a chance to fetch them. And as for now, um, Inaga will play as Christ will. Uh, as for now, we will ask though to read the scripture as is taken on Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 7. And we'll continue um, after that until the end of the service. Don't Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. And he is risen indeed. What a glorious resurrection Sunday morning. Let us just bow our heads in prayer before we read. Love poured out on that cruel cross, a blood offering so that we might go free. Love poured into this world with rivers of grace and hope of rebirth. Love poured out into these hearts who drink from a stream that never runs dry. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. May this declaration, Lord, resound not only in these walls, but touch the lives of all that we meet and forever be the truth of which we speak. Your love, once sown within a garden, tended for your own people, neglected and rejected, now spreads its sweet perfume in this place and wherever it is shown. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Lord, when our faith stands at the grave, grieving for a stone that's rolled away, forgive us. When our faith is short of understanding through the truth, is there to see, forgive us. When our faith, beset by doubt, sees no further than an empty tomb today, forgive us. Bring to mind the cry of Mary, I have seen the Lord and grant us faith to believe. We thank you that Easter is not about a people, but all people, that your love and your salvation are for all who confess with voices, hearts and lives, that the tomb is empty because Jesus is risen, that we might know forgiveness, that lives might be reborn and your name be glorified now and for eternity. We pray this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We take our reading this morning from Mark 16, from verses 1 to 7. Mark 16, 1 to 7. And it reads as follows. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Very, very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. May God bless the reading of his word. Friends, that is the story of the resurrection that we are going to be reflecting on and sharing and witnessing about. Thank you for joining us this morning um, in our different homes in, with families alone, uh, some of us, but let God, the, the preaching of the word of God and the reading of the God, of the word of God, touch our hearts and comfort us 
and take away every stone that could be um, concealing our, our aspirations and our love. The story is as told by Mark, just like the other Gospels, narrates the resurrection story, although they do it differently. But of the four Gospels, only the Mark records the women concerned as they are going to the tomb. Who will remove the stone? These are the women who have obviously forgotten about anything else and about the stone. These are the women who cried themselves to sleep on Friday after witnessing a cruel crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The one that they hoped will destroy and keep their families together. They have seen their hope and faith destroyed when Christ, the man who affirmed their humanity and treated them differently um, than the, the, uh, the, the, the Jewish culture and with respect, was buried behind the stone beyond, beyond their strength. While waiting through the, the Sabbath, they have even forgotten about this stone. They observe all religious rules, obviously obsessing about uh, the day after the Sabbath that they can go and anoint Jesus. They bought the necessary spices in order to embalm the body of their beloved friend. This will be for them, the last service that they will be performing for Jesus. They will be doing an act of service for their beloved to bid him final farewell as they put their hopes and their dreams to rest. As if Friday was not enough, they realized another difficulty, the stone that was rolled to close the entrance of the tomb is beyond their strength. They are only women, you see, and there is no way they could remove this big stone. Hence the question, who will roll away the stone? The, the question echoes a familiar concern uh, to that of many of us. With our never, ever, never ending challenges, just as the one makes peace or divides a means or become familiar with the one problem, the other one starts. Maybe some people amongst us just found a job that they have been looking for, for for a very long time and just were at that time, at that point, lockdown was declared. Now we are not even sure whether you still have a job. Others might have had business breakthroughs and the bank might just refuse to finance them. It is an, an, an ending a struggle with the problems and the challenges that we are facing, that often they become like stones in our life. These women ask a very pertinent question, yet with very limited answers. Who is there to help us? That's the question that they ask. Despite this, their spirit is not dampened. They continue to the tomb, even though their, their knees are shaky, their hearts are raising with anxiety. They seem not to want to accept what lay ahead. They know that the stone is there. They know that they cannot remove the stone, yet they move forward. They come as the Jewish women, the women who are socialized in their self-understanding as weak and unable. But yet they have a faith that touched the heart of a stone moving God. This unusual and unprecedented journey of their lifetime is a, it's a journey that they are traveling through the power of God. The power of love that is seeking to restore the equality of all men, women, and children in the image of God. The equality that God would like all of us to recognize that we are stewards of his creation. Of his creation. It's an opportunity that our able God uses this feeble weak and insignificant things to create great things. You know, sometimes when we are in this lockdown, we heard that there are, the, the, the uh, domestic violence has raised and domestic violence is far more than it was, it used to be. But I want just to say, and maybe to warn those abusive, those who are abusive and who speak down or to their families, to their wives, their husbands and their children, to be careful not to be holding on to the stone that robs yourself and your family of joy and happiness. 
Yet these women are heading towards the tomb of Jesus, the one who often surprises us in the most unusual way. The one who comes when our human strength and knowledge fail, that is ready to intervene with power from on high. The weak can say we are strong in Christ. Mark tells us that when they just looked up, they found that the, the stone was rolled away. The woman found the stone that was separating people from God removed in a direction, in a direct way of communication open between uh, even for this lowly of society. You see, women in the Jewish culture did not have any significance. Women in the Jewish culture were subordinate. Women in, in, in Jewish culture had no rights, had no standing in a, in a community. But with Christ, they have a direct link and a direct communication. God opens this line to them, for them, to be the first people to see into or to look into the tomb of Christ. Often a stone of self-doubt is removed that gave them hope and a chance to sustain their faith, which allowed God to surprise them, the space to surprise them with, with a miracle. The stone was removed for these women to experience a personal encounter with God. The God of restoration who gives the lowly can rejoice and glorify the Lord, like Mary, the mother of Jesus. The stone is removed so that the rock that is in Christ can affirm the humble and faithful ignorant so that the rank and file could also be heralded of the resurrection message. You see, Christ calls all of us. Christ sends all of us. Christ affirms all of us. Even this morning, whoever you are, whatever you think, whatever the stones have identified you as, whatever you know that there is things that you cannot do, move on. Go on to Christ. Don't give up. Just keep going because Christ will meet you in the most unusual way. The important thing is that the Jews were expecting the Messiah to restore the nation of Israel at this point. Hence, we have seen them coming on Sunday last week saying, Hosanna to the King, to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But the good news of salvation through Christ is the restoration of the community of God. The Jews as a community of God wanted to, uh, themselves or they were desiring for for, re, for, re, for, for restoration with God. They were desiring for their dignity to be restored. They were desiring for them to be known as the people of God. But the salvation for us this time as it was for these women is the basic to, to restore the basic unit as the family. You see, Jesus was born into a carpenter's family of Nazareth, which often was the stone that blocked the view of the rabbis as the self-righteous, knowledgeable, and the powerful, of, of the powerful. They could not accept Jesus' divinity because of who he was. Yet the Bible teaches us that Jesus honored his mother, listened to his father Joseph, and still did the will of his heavenly father. What these women discover on this morning, the unique Sunday morning, gives us the opportunity to redefine the miracles as that which only God can do. You see, we have now defined the miracles as the package inspiration that people are made to pay for. We have made to understand the, the miracles as those things that we can define and determine and say, this is what I want from God. Whereas these women went expecting a miracle, not knowing what it is. The stone was rolled in front of the entrance of the, of the tomb. They did not know. And that becomes a miracle. When God surprises us, when we leave space for God to surprise us, then we receive miracles. Frank Morris in his book, Who Moved the Stone, go to great length to investigate this fact, but eventually comes to a conclusion after uh, you know, uh, 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 deconstructing one fact after the other, one myth after the other, he comes to the conclusion that only Christ, could have been the one who wrote the story. 
Are you facing any immediate stone? Or are you anticipating any stone along your path? Just tell Jesus about yours. Whether it is your family, whether it is your, your group of friends, Jesus moves in an intruding stone, the stones that are not supposed to be there. These women, all they wanted was to go and embalm Jesus. But when facing heavy stone and concern, they were not walking alone. They were walked with two Marys and the Salome. They were walking towards the, the tomb of Jesus. It is important that we surround ourselves with the like-minded people and with those people who will affirm our humanity, who will understand our desires, those who will encourage us into how we can be better Christians. My prayer is that as we walk towards this Christ who opens stones, who rolls away stones, is that the stone of discrimination that is often destroying the, 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 the people or the nations can be destroyed. And that the stone of subordination can be crushed for the rock that is Christ to rebuild our families. Whether it is the families of a bloodline, whether it's a gathered or dispersed communities of believers throughout the nation. My prayer is that we can allow Christ, we could allow Christ to remove the stone. We find ourselves on this Resurrection Sunday under lockdown in South Africa. COVID-19 has isolated the nations of the world. The world has come to a standstill. The extension of a lockdown means that the Christian community will continue to gather and worship behind those doors. And this has become a very heavy storm. Yet the Bible teaches us that all things work together for good for those who trust in the Lord. This time of lockdown has reminded the church that it is a gathering of communities that begins with a believing family. And Jesus Christ, who has restored and assured the women of their humanity, is encouraging a family that a family that prays together can actually stay together. It is a resounding message that a violence in family, the abuse and the violation of members of the family, even the community, betrays the founding fabric of love, peace, and justice for the nations. Grace in this lockdown of COVID-19 is that the family, as me and you, and our families are separated, we are set apart. We are in quietness, in stillness, and in silence. We are experiencing the renewing presence of the risen Messiah and the, and the resurrected Lord. Even though we are separated, um, by space and we are separated by time. But in united in spirit as blood families, as spiritual communities, and as neighbors. The love of God, it is victorious through the resurrected Christ, bind us with cords that can never be broken. COVID-19 has brought the weak and powerful to their knees. Christians and non-believers equally seek divine intervention. It reminds us of the good news, that in Christ there is no Jew, no Gentile. There is no female or male. There's no master or servant. Because all of us, born a baptized, have got one baptism, one Lord, and one spirit. What I know is that this lockdown will, will end one day. Because Christ's resurrection message proclaims Christ's victory over diseases over powers of darkness and all kindness of discrimination. COVID-19 is the stone that has no match for God because Christ still removes stones. And who will remove your stone? Whatever name, whatever size, whatever shape of that stone, remember that Jesus still effectively moves stones. To give so that when the, the, the stones are removed, we can see clear uh, of his love. We can draw closer to his grace. We can have peace and joy. But also what we read in, this, in, this, in, in Mark's gospel is that after the, the, man, the, the young men that they're meeting, the young men tell them that they must go and tell their, their brothers, the disciples of Christ, that Christ will meet them in Galilee. Once your stone has been removed, 
once you have encountered the presence of the Holy Spirit, once Christ has spoken to you through the Holy Spirit and the people of God, remember that you are called to be a witness of the good news of grace. Remember that when your stone has been removed, you have to strive to have to live a holy and good life, to choose peace over strife, to choose love over hate, freedom over oppression. They are called to go to others, to go and inform those who are not here. They are, in, they are, they are called to go and be witnesses. They are no longer those women who were scared. They are no longer women who, who did not understand who they are. They are not those women who did not know who will remove the stone. They are given the page that anybody can ever, the message of the resurrection of Christ. Like the women of the resurrection movement are streaming in, even if our concern is about challenges beyond our control. Some of us have no inkling of any miracle or present surprise, pleasant surprise, but by the great act, we hope we have to come, hoping to see what we can do and serve, what, and serve Christ better. The Christ of God, our Savior. We can thank him for removing any doubt and removing the stone that blinded us from your love and grace. We pray that God will grant us the grace to see the hand of God that removes the stones. And that will remove each and every challenge, every problem, every concern. Give us the opportunity to witness about our joy and happiness in Christ our Lord. It is the Resurrection Sunday. The stone has been removed. Jesus still removed the stone. Hallelujah. The message of the Resurrection that Jesus is alive. The Messiah is alive. And the Lord is alive. And we give glory to God. Mm. We will at this point. Uh, prepare as I said that we are going to be having the communion at the end of, of, of the of the sermon. Um, we will take a, a a hymn and then um as the hymn plays please uh, prepare a, a communion for yourself that we will have communion at home. We are going to be serving ourselves in the homes but I will consecrate from where I am and then um later you will have to have your own communion, you will share amongst yourself in the family. If you are alone, we will hope that the Holy Spirit, you will feel the presence of the, of the, presence of the Holy Spirit. A hymn upon the gracie robes. Feel the love. 
table of mercy and we are going to be consecrating the elements and i hope that all of us have our elements in front of us in our homes and we are going to be uh, doing a liturgy which i'll pretty much do on my own uh, because uh, we cannot share as we will but i will try and do the familiar that we are actually doing lord we lift our, our, up our hearts we lift up our hearts to you, for it is right to give you thanks and praise. Oh, what happened now here? He does this to me all the time. Okay, let me sit down. Lord, we lift up our hearts to you, for it is right to give you thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, it is indeed, it is our salvation always and, and ev ev every way to give you thanks and praise in Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, our Lord. Lord, we come to your table trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but it is your mercy always to have mercy, the nature always to have mercy. 
and on death we depend. Trace us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. We praise you, Lord God, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body broken for you. Do it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. It is the blood of my covenant poured out to you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance. Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Therefore, Father, as Jesus commanded us to do this in remembrance of him, we ask you to accept these sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receive, we who receive the gifts of the bread and wine may share in the body and the blood of Christ. Make us one body with him. Accept us as, uh, or offer ourselves as a living sacrifice and bring us with the whole creation to a heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The bread we break is the body of Christ. Why we drink is the sharing in the blood of Christ. Though we are dispersed in various homes, we are one body because we share through Christ, your Son, our Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you will feed us in the sacrament, you will unite us with Christ, and give us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for you and all humankind. We will, as families, serve one another after this. We must please serve one another in faith as we receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you and for me, and his blood which was shed for you and for me. We feed on him in our hearts in faith and thanksgiving. And at the end, after you share your communion in the families or after you share communion on your own, Please pronounce the benediction after your Holy Communion. And may the peace of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit help us to be witnesses of the stone that has been removed and help us to be heralded throughout the world to go and tell other disciples of Christ, to go and tell even those who are still lost that Christ is risen and victory is for us and we are one with Christ and one with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Lord, like the women of the resurrection morning, we are streaming in, even if our concerns are about challenges beyond our strength. Some of us have got no understanding. Some of us have got no uh, a, a faith that you will surprise us by the great act of hope. But we have come, Lord. We come from our homes in different places, we come just to wanting to serve you. We have come, Lord Jesus, to present ourselves to you as living sacrifices. The Christ of God, Savior of the world, thank you for removing my doubt and for restoring, for removing the stone that blinded us from your love and grace. We pray that you will grant us the grace to see the hand of God that removed the stone. Remove each and every challenge, a problem and concern from each and every one of us so that we can be, find opportunities to witness about our joy and our law, our, our, our happiness. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Let us together, we will now come into the time of sharing communion. And at the end, um, we will take the last song and then uh, and then we will disperse. May the good Lord, who has removed the stone, who promises that even if we don't know who will, that he assures us that he is still present. The COVID-19 will end because Christ removes each and every stone. There is no stone in a big enough.
for him to do. No, small enough for him to ignore. May the grace of our Lord be with you. Amen. We are sharing in communion. The blood of Christ shed for you to be a witness to the world. The blood of Christ shed for you to be a witness to the world. The blood of Christ that was shed for you to be a witness to the world. The blood of Christ that was shed for you to be a witness to the world. The blood of Christ that was shed for you to be a witness to the world. Friends, you are welcome to share in the sacrifice in the sacrament in your families, even when you are alone. Please share the sacrament and at the end of it pronounce benediction and go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. What happened to the voice, to the volume? Jesus, my